This video is going to have a look at how to name alkenes. The first thing to know that alkenes are a class of compounds that contain the alkenyl functional group. And what is that? Well, that's simply a carbon to carbon double bond somewhere in my organic compound. And how do we name these? Well, the key thing to know here is that the end of the name of alkenes is going to be ene. Uh, suffix just means the end part of the name. And for reference, Let's include how we find out the stem name in our alkenes related to the number of carbons in the main chain, which gives us the central part of the name of that molecule. Let's have a look at some examples. Here we go. So there's a carbon-carbon double bond in there, so it's definitely going to be an alkene. If I count the number of carbons in my main chain, I've got one, two. Uh, two relates to the stem name of eth. So in this case, uh, if I write eth, and it's an alkene, so it's going to end with ene, that is ethene. Let's have a look at the second example. Here we go, let's go through the same process. There's still a carbon-carbon double bond, so it's definitely an alkene. How many carbons in my main chain? I've got one, two, three, four. So the stem part of my name is going to be bute, which you can see down here. Um, it's an alkene again. So it's going to end with en. However, there's one additional bit of detail here. If I number my carbons, one, two, three, four, that double bond could be between the first and second carbon. It could also be in the middle of the molecule between the second and third. So to give a little bit more information about where it is, I'm going to write a number in the middle of my name that indicates where that double bond starts. And because it's starting on the first carbon, I'm going to call it but one en. And you'll notice between the number and the letters, I've put a little dash just for clarity there. Let's take a second exa third example, even. Same process. We've got one, two, three, four carbons. Yeah, it's still bute. So we're going to put our stem name in there. However, this time, again, I'm going to label my carbons. This time, the double bond begins on the second carbon. So unlike the previous example, this is going to be bute. Two, in. Let's have a look at another one. Here we go. Slightly complicated looking thing. So let's first of all find the longest carbon chain, and it looks like it's going to be my chain going straight across the molecule. It's got five carbons this time, so my stem name is going to be pent. Uh, let's write pent in there. Uh, where does my double bond start? Well, let's number my carbons with the double bond closest to the beginning. So from left to right, one, two, three, four, five. Starts on the first carbon, so it's going to be pent one e. However, I've also got this substituent group or this alkyl group specifically sticking off the side with one carbon. So I'm going to need to start my name with some information about where that methyl group is. And it looks like it's coming off the third carbon, so this is going to be 3-methyl-pent-1-ene. A little bit more difficult, that one. And finally, let's look at a challenging one. Well, in this case, I can see I've actually got two double bonds. So how do we go about naming that? Well, let's first of all have a look at the number of carbons in my main chain. I've got one, two, three, four. So looking at my little stem table there, it's going to be bute. And this time, again, let's label my carbons to identify where those double bonds begin. Well, I've got one double bond starting on the first carbon, a second double bond starting on the third carbon. So I'm going to put bute 1, comma, 3. And because there's two of those ene groups, I'm going to call it diene. And that just indicates that there are two double bonds in my molecule. That's about it for alkenes. Hopefully this video is of some help.